Today I'm diving into a fascinating paradox in physics, the Loschmidt's paradox. It's a mind-bending clash between time reversal and thermodynamics. Let's start with the basics. The second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy or disorder of an isolated system always increases over time. Simply put, things naturally become more chaotic and less ordered. Think about an ice cube melting in a warm room. It won't refreeze on its own, right? That's entropy doing its thing. Now enter Loschmidt's paradox. This paradox questions why we don't see time reverse processes in nature. Why don't we see ice cubes spontaneously forming from water? It's named after Johann Loschmidt, an Austrian physicist who pointed out that if the laws of physics are time symmetric, meaning they work the same forwards and backwards in time, then the second law of thermodynamics shouldn't hold. So what's the catch? Well, it's all about time symmetry. Most fundamental physical processes, like the motion of particles, are time reversible. If you were to film a single particle moving and then play it backwards, there's no way to tell the difference. But when we scale up to macroscopic systems, things change. Imagine a box of gas particles all starting in one corner. Over time, they spread out to fill the box. This process is irreversible, increasing entropy. If you filmed it and played it backwards, it would look bizarre. Gas particles don't naturally clump back together. Here's where the paradox bites. How can time-symmetric microscopic laws lead to irreversible macroscopic behavior? This seems contradictory, but there are explanations. One key idea is the concept of initial conditions. The universe started in a highly ordered state. As time progresses, entropy increases. Any process that happens regularly in the forward direction of time, but rarely or never in the opposite direction, such as entropy increasing in an isolated system, defines what physicists call an arrow of time in nature. This term only refers to an observation of an asymmetry in time. It is not meant to suggest an explanation for such asymmetries. Loschmidt's paradox is equivalent to the question of how it is possible that there could be a thermodynamic arrow of time, given time-symmetric fundamental laws. Time symmetry implies that for any process compatible with these fundamental laws, a reversed version that looked exactly like a film of the first process played backwards would be equally compatible with the same fundamental laws and would even be equally probable if one were to pick the system's initial state randomly from the phase space of all possible states for that system. Although most of the arrows of time described by physicists are thought to be special cases of the thermodynamic arrow, there are a few that are believed to be unconnected. For instance, the cosmological arrow of time is based on the fact that the universe is expanding rather than contracting. Another example involves certain processes in particle physics that actually violate time symmetry, while they respect a related symmetry known as CPT symmetry. In the case of the cosmological arrow, most physicists believe that entropy would continue to increase even if the universe began to contract. Although the physicist Thomas Gold once proposed a model in which the thermodynamic arrow would reverse in this phase. In the case of the violations of time symmetry in particle physics, the situations in which they occur are rare and are only known to involve a few types of meson particles. Furthermore, due to CPT symmetry, reversal of the direction of time is equivalent to renaming particles as antiparticles and vice versa. Therefore, this cannot explain Loschmidt's paradox. Now, let's explore an intriguing approach to resolving Loschmidt's paradox, the fluctuation theorem. Developed by Dennis Evans and Deborah Searles, this theorem provides a numerical estimate of the probability that a system away from equilibrium will exhibit a certain value for the dissipation function over a given time frame. This dissipation function often resembles an entropy-like property and helps quantify the system's behavior. The fluctuation theorem is derived using exact time-reversible dynamical equations of motion and the universal causation proposition. It leverages the fact that dynamics are time-reversible which is a key aspect of Loschmidt's paradox. Quantitative predictions of this theorem have been confirmed by laboratory experiments at the Australian National University, conducted by Edith M. Sevick and her team using optical tweezers apparatus. This theorem is particularly applicable to transient systems, which may start in equilibrium and then be driven away or begin in some arbitrary initial state and move towards equilibrium. 
There is also an asymptotic result for systems that remain in a non-equilibrium steady state at all times. A crucial point of the fluctuation theorem is how it differs from Loschmidt's original framing of the paradox. Loschmidt considered the probability of observing a single trajectory, akin to asking about the probability of finding a single point in phase space, both of which have a probability of zero, to effectively address this, one must consider the probability density for a set of points in a small region of phase space or a set of trajectories. The fluctuation theorem examines the probability density for all trajectories initially in an infinitesimally small region of phase space. This approach directly leads to the probability of finding a trajectory in either the forward or reverse sets, depending on the initial probability distribution and the dissipation occurring as the system evolves. This crucial difference allows the fluctuation theorem to effectively solve Loschmidt's paradox. Now, let's delve into another compelling approach to Loschmidt's paradox, focusing on the critical step where velocities are reversed. This step is particularly intriguing because it transforms the gas into an open system, necessitating precise position and velocity measurements. Without such measurements, reversing the velocities is impossible. These measurements can be either irreversible or reversible. If they are irreversible, the measuring process itself requires an increase in entropy within the measuring device, effectively offsetting any decrease in entropy during the reversed evolution of the gas. This aligns with the second law of thermodynamics, ensuring that the overall entropy of the system, gas plus measuring device, still increases. In the case of reversible measurements, we can invoke Landauer's principle. This principle states that erasing information, such as resetting a measuring device, also incurs an increase in entropy. Thus, even when measurements are reversible, the system still adheres to the second law. Interestingly, this argument mirrors another explanation given by Charles Bennett for Maxwell's demon, a thought experiment that also grapples with entropy and measurement. The difference lies in the clarity of the role of measurement. While obvious in Maxwell's demon, it's more subtle in Loschmidt's paradox, explaining the significant time gap between the two explanations. For the single trajectory aspect of the paradox, this argument preempts the need for additional explanations, although other theories do offer valuable insights. However, the broader paradox, asserting that an irreversible process cannot be derived from reversible dynamics, remains an open question. Another intriguing perspective considers the second law of thermodynamics as an expression of boundary conditions. Our universe's time coordinates started with a low entropy state, the Big Bang. From this viewpoint, the arrow of time is simply the direction leading away from the Big Bang. In a hypothetical universe where the Big Bang had maximum entropy, there would be no arrow of time. The theory of cosmic inflation provides a rationale for why the early universe had such low entropy, further enriching our understanding of the arrow of time and its relationship to entropy by examining these sophisticated approaches we deepen our grasp of how fundamental laws govern our universe and